So you just bought your first RC car, or you're doing a little bit of research right now before you buy your first RC car, and you wanna know what mistakes you should avoid. Well, I think you found the right video. I'm Greg with rcdriver.com, and we're gonna give you our 10 common newbie mistakes that you should avoid. Let's get right into it. So mistake number one, not buying the right vehicle. I know this A-scale Nitro Racing buggy right here looks really cool, but it's really not the best place for you to start. Let me put this aside. Find something that's more suitable for getting into RC. Something like a, a trail truck like this Axial SCX-102 or this Traxxas Slash. These are both electric, they come ready to run, and they're really easy to use. They come with great instruction manuals, and just be true to yourself when you're walking into the store. I know something like that big gas truck right there looks really cool, but you know, there's a lot of responsibility that comes with it. And you know, if you've never worked on an RC car before, you might find it a little scary once you start getting into things. So find the right vehicle for you, talk to your hobby store, they'll point you in the right direction, and start off with something you can manage. Common newbie mistake number two, not reading the manual. Now I know you're really excited, you just got your first RC card, you wanna head right outside and drive it, but take the time to read the manual. Trust me, the manufacturers put a lot of time in these things to make sure everything you need to know is explained right in here. So take the time, it'll, it'll tell you about you know your electronics, uh, charging, uh, how to simply turn it on and off, although we did a video on that too, uh, how to do repairs. There's a lot of valuable information. And if there's multiple manuals like this one here for the radio system that comes with the truck, read them all. Just be familiar with everything on your RC car. And that way, when you do go outside, it'll be pure fun. Common newbie mistake number three. I just felt like doing a dramatic intro. Anyway, it's gluing your tires. Now, I know your Ready to Run came with the tires pre-mounted, but when you buy your first set of aftermarket tires, most likely you're gonna have to glue them yourselves. So what you need is you need some tire glue and you probably need some cleaner as well. What you're gonna do is you're gonna use this cleaner to clean the bead of the tire and the rim and then use a good quality tire glue such as this from Proline to seal that bead up. And that way when you go out and give your car full throttle, your tires don't blast off in any direction. Newbie mistake number four, not charging your battery. Now, these are not like the batteries that come in a grocery store. These are not charged. You need to charge them. I've seen so many customers come back to a hobby store and they're in a rage and my car only worked for a few seconds or five minutes and then it stopped. Well, nickel metals, they pretty much come dead. They need to be fully charged when you first get them. Lipo batteries, they come about half charged so you could get some use out of them, but they, again, need to be charged as soon as you get home. So get yourself a good charger, and when you go home, charge up your batteries, make sure they're fully peaked, and then you could go outside and have some fun. On to newbie mistake number five, over-oiling your RC car. Folks, your RC car is not like your real car. It does not need a huge quart of oil inside the transmission. On your RC car, if you do take the transmission apart for maintenance, you just need a light coating or grease on the gears. If you do take the differential apart and it needs oil, just put the right amount in. You don't want to overfill it to where when you start using it, oil is going to start seeping out of all of the seams. And if you go and rebuild your shocks, there is a certain amount of oil that goes in them as well. What you want to do is take a look at your instruction manual, see what the manufacturer recommends as far as how far to fill it, and you won't have any lock up once you put your suspension back together. Newbie mistake number six is geared towards our new racers. So when you head to the track for the first time and you're going to put your car down for practice, do not, I repeat, do not put your car down on the front straightaway. We've seen so many new racers go, they're really excited about running and they go put their car down on the straightaway and they go walk up to the driver's stand and in the meantime, somebody else is blasting down the street, rear ends the car and takes both cars out, damages both cars. This is a common mistake we see time and time again. Usually tracks have areas where you could set the car down on. If you don't see that right away, just take your time, see where other racers are placing their car, and that's where you want to place your car. You don't want to cause any damage to anyone's car or your car on your first race day. So you went ahead and bought your first Nitro RC car. Well, these next two newbie mistakes, they're geared towards you. The first one is, is not charging your glow igniter. 
This needs to be charged up before you could go fire up your engine. Now most glow igniters come with their own charger, so put it on charge for about four hours before you try to start up your engine. We've seen so many customers go back to a hobby shop with Popeye arm because they've been wrenching on the pull start for an hour and they're, uh, they're furious that their car didn't start. And all the hobby shop owner does is take a charge glow igniter, goes out and fires it right up. Save yourself some time, save yourself some strength and go charge this first. So what's Nitro Newbie mistake number eight? Well, breaking your engine in properly. I know when you go and finally get it fired up for the first time, it's gonna sound really cool and you're gonna see the smoke pouring out. You just wanna go run it, but take the time to break the engine in properly. And almost every single manufacturer includes braking instructions with a nitro vehicle. Take the time to read through these instructions and follow exactly what they do. Make sure you have the right fuel. Make sure you're giving it the right amount of throttle. Make sure your needle valves are set properly. This Lozy manual right here instructs you to drive in a figure eight in order to keep the stress on the engine low while the engine breaks in. So take the time, do it right, and your engine should last a long time. Okay, we're nearing the end here. On to newbie mistake number nine, over tightening your hardware. Now let's say you do need to go ahead and wrench on your RC machine. You don't need a big automotive ratchet like this to tighten down the hardware. Most hardware on RC cars just needs to go a little past snug. Now there are a few exceptions like your motor or pinion gear or a nitro engine. Those need a little bit more force to tighten them down to make sure they're secure. But most hardware on the suspension or on the chassis just needs to be tightened down a little bit past snug. If you go too far, you risk the chance of stripping out the hole or you may strip out the head on the, on the screw and then it's much harder to remove that hardware later on. Okay, we've made it. Newbie mistake number 10. And this one has to deal with not properly setting up your charger to charge your LiPo battery. I can't stress to you enough how important this step is. And we probably should have put it earlier up in the newbie mistake list. But you need to set your charger properly to charge a LiPo battery. First, make sure you get a good quality charger. Second step is to make sure that you put all the settings into the charger so it charges your battery properly. If you don't, it could have some disastrous effects. I've seen a lot of LiPo fires in my day and I've actually had one here at my house. So I can't stress to you enough how important it is to make sure you set your LiPo battery properly and never leave it unattended while it's charging. Ah, so you thought we were done. Not just yet, I have one more tip I wanna share with you. And that tip is to support your local hobby shops. When you're getting into RC, well, you're gonna have a lot of questions and the owner of that local hobby shop or its employees, well, they're gonna be able to help you. Now, this is the point in the video where I ask you to subscribe to our YouTube channel and I hope you do so. But if you could do me one more favor and just share this video so hopefully you help one of your friends get into RC with success as well.